So here we have the Gayotaku project and it's the polyprint plate. I've got a palette and I've got some water-based block printing ink. This is slightly stickier and viscous than paint and designed for this process. This is exactly the same process we use when we are inking up a lino print, but sometimes use oil-based ink. So you put your ink onto the palette or a cleanable surface and you put it in a well and you're gonna use a roller. That's the well, you're gonna take the roller and roll up to the well. So you see you have to roll backwards and forwards and to get an uneven distribution of ink, which you want to coat the surface of the roller, you need to create an uneven pattern when you're rolling. So don't just go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So you might find that you get little bits into the ink. Do not worry, you can just pick them up on the surface of your finger and just move them or use a scrap of card to do that. But you can just roll and get a nice even surface. Now I'm going to show you something you don't want. This is where you roll too much ink. You see it's really thick and that would fill the drawn surface onto the polystyrene print plate or if it was a lino, the cutaway areas. So if you watch what I do, I put pressure on the back of the roller and it's forcing the ink rather than it rolling up to the well. And I'll just re-roll again to get that even distribution. Now, if you notice, I've got a piece of backing paper so I don't have to clean up, but if you've got a table you can wipe down easily, you don't necessarily need backing paper. And I'm holding the fish gently and I'm just rolling onto the surface. You can instantly see what happens, that the drawing is really visible and the ink is on the top surface and those drawn lines almost are left as a white, like an area that's been cut away. So I'm reorientating the fish as I'm working on it. You could turn the paper around, it doesn't really matter but you can see I'm getting nice distribution. There's incidental marks on the back there. So I don't particularly want those when I'm printing. I'm taking a nice new piece of paper. I've got dirty bits on my fingers, so I was just wiping them off. I'm taking the fish plate and I'm putting it down on the paper where I would like it on that piece of paper. I can position it. So I'm pressing it down and it's sticky, remember, the ink is viscous and sticky. So I can just turn it over quite easily. And this means that I've got good contact. Now, I don't want to put all my body weight and press down really hard. I just want to rub and sort of burnish the back of the paper, making sure there's nice contact between the plate and the paper. I can peel it back and just check it and then and rub it again. So I'm not taking it completely off, only part off. And there we have the first print, quite a successful print. The print plate can be inked again and printed again onto another piece of paper. Don't worry if it breaks, remember we can tape in the background. So I've jumped ahead and I've started printing a repeat print. I've done this while each print is wet, so all the work above is wet, so bear that in mind. Now I've lined up, I've inked up exactly as I have previously, I've lined up with the row sort of two above, not the row above, two above. And now I'm going to just ink up again I'm going to line up the front and back of the fish. So I'm going to carefully ink up there. Notice there is ink going all over the table, but I'm not too bothered because I can wash this table at the end. But I could have put some paper down. So I've got those two elements of the fish there and there. I'm inking up again. Now I've realised that part of one of my fins has fallen off. Now I could go and wash and dry my print plate and put it back on. In this case, what I've just done is I've just inked it up and pressed it as a single element, but I can repair that print plate. Now I'm looking again at the alignment of each row and I'm lining not the row above, but two above. And I've looked at that alignment, I've inked that up nicely. I'm gonna ink up the other end of it again. And you can see, go in and align it. So this process, creates the repeat print. Your print might not tessellate and fit quite as well as mine has by chance. I didn't design it this way. But if you do have gaps, you can make a small print plate and, and fill in gaps with some seaweed or something else relevant to your idea. So I've got some red ink still on the surface, which won't matter because my second color I'm now going to apply is black. So this is another type of experimentation and this is like a layering process. So I'm adding a little bit of ink. I'm not doing it necessarily evenly. I'm just experimenting. Think about on the surface of a fish, how sometimes the color isn't a flat, even color. Think about how that iridescence and the kind of qualities you might have. You might look at some reference material for some ideas. 
Now what I've done is I've inked up the print plate and I'm now going to carefully align it with the print below. I'm not being very careful, but I've aligned it. I'm turning it over again this time. I didn't do in the previous one, but this one's a single print, so I've not got lots of ink everywhere on my plate and my image. So I can turn it over, get that better contact, and then gently peel it away. Remember, I lost a fin in the process, so that bottom fin is going to stay red. It's worked reasonably well, and you can see there's different qualities of different colours coming through. There's more experimentation you could be doing. You could add other colours again and keep printing on top of it. Bearing in mind, your colours will become muddy if you keep mixing them. Quick recap, fish one printed on white. This fish is just a single colour print. You could print on multiple colours. Fish print two was a multiple repeat. Remember, I considered the alignment of each one as I went. And fish print three, I've layered multiple colours using one plate on top of each other. I can continue to clean that plate, wash it and print with additional colours on top of it. Enjoy experimenting with polyprint.